So in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at IRC, Internet Relay Chat. We're going to talk about what it is, why you would want to use it, and then we'll actually get connected, get into IRC channel, um, talk about some of the ways that you should interact and um, some best practices around things to do or not to do in the IRC channel. Uh, and then we'll just uh, look at a few quick tips and tricks to kind of get you started um, and show you some more resources to kind of keep having fun in IRC. So what exactly is IRC? Well, we said it stands for Internet Relay Chat, but it's basically online chat rooms. So it's a text-based interface to uh, communicate with other people around the world. It's been around for a really long time. Some people may have used IRC uh, back when it was much more popular and didn't realize that it's still uh, exists today because um, it's considered sort of an older technology, but it's extremely useful. It's very simple. A lot of people can get access to it all over the world, and it gives us real-time interaction with other people in the community um, to get work done or to get answers to questions. So we have a lot of asynchronous things like you know email or forums and things like that, but IRC is where you can really meet other people in the community and really sort of accelerate the work that you're trying to get done and get a sense of personality and who these people are. So it's a really, really rich resource for getting help when you're working on Drupal that a lot of people ignore because it seems a little weird and old or geeky or something. Um, but once you understand the basics of how IRC works, it's really a, a very great tool that's used uh, tremendously in our community. So what do you need to actually get started with IRC? So <coughs> these are the four things that I, I want us to cover in this lesson. The first thing is that you actually need a way to connect to the IRC protocol, um, so uh, which we would call a client. And uh, so I consider that sort of the vehicle to get you somewhere. Then we have uh, the actual IRC network to connect to. There are a lot of different networks, and you need to know which network. Uh, and I like to think of this as like a building that I'm trying to find with a specific address. And then once you're on a network or in a building, you need to find the actual rooms or channels in order to find the people to actually begin talking. So you have a few steps that are involved, but they're all very simple once you understand what they are. And then the last thing that is important is your nickname, also called just a nick. This is your online identity. Um, and it's important to have some consistency with your identity so that people know who they're speaking to. Um, in person, you can obviously see somebody, but online, that nickname that you use is the thing that people are using to identify you as a unique individual. So the first step in getting yourself connected to IRC is having an actual client to interact and connect you to the IRC protocol. So uh, there are web-based clients where you just browse to a website in your browser and you can use that as your connection. And webchat.freenode.net is an example of just a web-based client. You also have applications that you can actually download, so software that you can download to your laptop or your desktop or your mobile phone um, <clears throat> that will let you connect to IRC. Um, the two I have listed here are, are very widely used as cross-platform applications. So uh, Pigeon, you can download on uh, Windows and Linux, and then it's all it's called Adium on Mac instead of Pigeon. And Chatzilla is a Firefox extension. So if you use Firefox, which you can use on all three operating systems, you can install the Chatzilla extension. And that will give you an IRC uh, client that you can use. There are a lot of clients that are specific to different operating systems. So it's really a matter of finding the ones that you like, exploring, seeing what other people use, and picking a client that you're comfortable with using. Once you have a client, in order to actually connect, the first thing that you're going to have to know is which network are you connecting to. There are over 650 IRC networks out there. Um, it's an open protocol and lots of people can create whatever networks they want to. Most open source projects are on the Freenode network. Uh, Freenode is an open source project and it 
encourages and supports uh, open source communities who want to work together on things it, and it supports collaborative communities. So the address for the Freenode network is irc.freenode.net. So when you're being asked for a host name or a server or a network in your client, that's the address that you need. That's the building that you want to go to. Once you connect to your network, the next thing you're going to need to figure out is which channels do you want to join so that you can start to take part in the conversations that are happening within those channels. These are the rooms in your building where there are other people who are hanging out and talking about things that you're interested in. The Freenode network has over 10,000 public channels um, and you can browse through those. There's lists uh, on the web uh, or many clients will let you search or browse through the public channels that are available. The Drupal community has over 100 channels. So we have a main channel which would be pound Drupal, um, but there are a hundred other channels uh, that range from uh, regional groups, uh, topical groups, there's you know uh, Drupal support, Drupal contribute. So we break, uh, we have many different rooms that are broken out according to very specific topics rather than just having everybody who has any question about anything related to Drupal in one place because that ends up leading to too many conversations um, and it's difficult to follow what's happening in the channel. You can get a full list of all of the different channels and a lot more information about connecting to IRC and policies and things like that at drupal.org slash IRC. And the last thing I want to point out here is when I was talking about our Drupal channels, I said like pound Drupal. Um, all the Drupal channel names begin with a hash mark or pound symbol. And this is true for Freenode. Um, on Freenode, all channels would begin with either one or two hash symbols at the front of them. But in the Drupal community, it always begins with the with just one of those hash symbols. But you need to make sure that you put that in when you are asking to join a channel or something, or else it's not going to understand. It's part of the name of the channel. And then the last little bit that you're going to need before you actually can connect is figuring out your nickname. Now the thing with nicknames is that someone might already have the name that you want to use. There are hundreds of thousands of users out there. And because identity is important and you want consistency with identity, you can register your nickname, which basically password protects your name so that somebody else can't uh, log in to the Freenode network as you. Um, you know, you could create a lot of confusion by that, both good or bad, I guess. So um, you want to register your nickname once you find one so that you can protect your identity and make sure that you're consistent. If you're joining and you use a nickname and somebody else already owns it, you're going to have to choose another one. You can't simply just take over somebody else's name because you like it or it's you know the name you use everywhere on the web. Uh, one good uh, practice when choosing an IRC nickname uh, within the Drupal community in particular is to try to pick the same nickname or something as close to the name that you use on your Drupal.org account. Again, it's that consistency of identity so that people know who they're actually working with or speaking to. So sometimes picking a nickname might take you a little time if somebody else has already taken the name you want um, but once you find a free nickname you should register that so that you know that it's yours to keep so for this lesson we're going to be looking at the web chat interface that freenode provides so that we don't even need to download any software to get started so you can think of my browser is my client since this is um, a web-based client and the network that I'm connected to is the Freenode network and since I'm using their web chat I don't have to put that information in they already know that and can assume that but if you're using some other kind of client like this is for example textual on a Mac if I go in and look at my server properties here you can see that they are asking for the primary server or host name or network name you need to put that irc.freenode.net address and then there's other fields in different places. So different clients are going to ask for different information in different ways. You just need to know the bit of information and figure out where to put the correct information. So uh, I'm going to be connecting to the Freenode network. I'm going to pick a name, just my name for a nickname. We'll see how that works. 
I'm going to go into the pound Drupal channel initially. I don't need to authorize or anything like that. No passwords here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my, uh, my recapture and connect to Freenode network. So first it connects me to the network. So that's what's happened here. And then it's going to connect me to the channel I asked for. Not all clients will do that for you right off the bat. You'll need to join a channel. We'll talk about that. You can see my name isn't, it's a little weird. It has that underscore after it. And that's because in when I joined the uh, network, it told me somebody else, that's somebody else's name. I don't have the password for it. So I'm going to have to change my name. And I can do this using uh, doing making a command. So you begin all commands in IRC with a slash, and then you put the command itself. But this is how IRC knows you're doing a command rather than text. So I'm going to do slash nick, and then I'm going to put the new nickname that I want to have. Hit enter. And now if I go back over to the Drupal channel here, you can see there's a message that says I've changed my nickname. And now I have that, and I'm not getting a message that it's somebody else's. So let's do another command. I'm going to join another channel. So slash join and then the name of the channel. And we're going to go into the Drupal support channel. So again, joined another channel. You can see there's messages at the top. Uh, and you can see that I'm logged in as ADD1. So let's do some things. Um, I'm in the channel. I can begin talking to people. So I can just type hello. You can see that text appears. Drupalcon is responded to me. Drupalcon is a bot. So Drupalcon is not a real person. It's a program that's monitoring the channel for keywords and then will respond. And it's a program to respond to people who say hello or hi, or give a basic greeting by returning a greeting in another language. Another uh, command that you can use that's fun that you see is slash me, which basically is a way for you to talk about yourself in the channel and see your own name appear. You'll see a lot of people doing that in the channel sometimes when referring to themselves. Another handy trick that the bot can do for you is if uh, you type in the name of a module, say views question mark, if you put a question mark or an exclamation point, that's a factoid from the bot. Um, and there are many, 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 many factoids that are extremely useful and you'll see them used quite often in the channels where you type in a word and you get information or links back uh, from the bot. You can see up here in this uh, message when we logged in that there's a link to DrupalCon.info. This is a website that has all of the basic information about the DrupalCon bot that we use in the Drupal channels. So you can read up on all the cool things that you can do with it here. There is a, um, a list of factoids. So if you wanted to browse through the list of all of the factoids, uh, the best way to learn factoids though is to hang out in the channel and see what people use. There are also logs. So these are publicly logged channels like Drupal support that we've been in. And you can go back and review that and look for information in there. You should never publicly post stuff from a channel that is not publicly logged like pound Drupal. It's just not polite um, unless you ask the people involved in the conversation ahead of time. So let's go back over to our web chat here and um, I went away, I came back, just want to point out I'm still in my Drupal support channel. If I wanted to switch, I could switch with these tabs in the top. Now another thing is you get to know people in the channel, you may want to actually get in touch with specific people and have conversations with them. And you can ping somebody by using their name within the channel. So if I wanted to ping, add one son, and also notice you can type a few letters and hit tab rather than typing full names out. And then I'm going to literally type the word ping which will probably create a ping for a highlight for somebody else. So I'm in another client here as add one son, and you can see that I, the, that line is highlighted for me and it also made a pinging sound. Um, and different clients can be set up to do different things. So now I would pong back. So that's just the standard thing that people do. You do ping to ask for someone's attention. And when the other person gives you that attention, uh, they will say pong. And you can see this is highlighted for me so that I know if I'm doing other things and I come back to look, it would stand out to me um, that somebody's speaking to me directly rather than speaking generally to the channel. And now we've gotten each other's attention and we can 
pick up on the conversation that we need to have. And different clients, you can set different things in terms of um, colors and how you get notifications and what highlights may or may not mean for you. Within uh, the web chat, you have this little options drop down so you can pick some things here. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that you should never private message somebody. There is the ability to private message in uh, IRC where you basically create a private chat room with just you and the other person. And generally that's frowned upon because all these conversations should be public unless you are having an actual real personal conversation with somebody that you know. But uh, you should always, and sometimes it's appropriate to have a private conversation. In that instance, you should contact the person that you want to have a private message with. You should ping them. And then you should ask them if it's okay to have a private message. So sometimes in channels, you'll see people say something like, add one son, PM? question mark, And that's asking, may I private message you? And you shouldn't begin a private message until that person responds and says yes. It's considered extremely rude behavior and uh, you won't win any friends uh, by doing that. So just keep that in mind. Um, private messages are not something that you should really need, uh, so we're not going to look at that here. So now that we've had some fun, it's time to leave. I can just close a tab, which will normally uh, leave the room, as it were, um, or I can type a command part, which would leave just this one room, but leave me in pound Drupal. If I wanted to leave all channels that I was in, I could do part all. Um, all is one word, one command. You can also just do the command quit and that will quit you from all channels and quit you from the network and completely disconnect you. So it depends on what level of leaving you would like to do. I'm going to go ahead and quit. And you can see I have this message that I'm now actually completely disconnected from the server itself. So that's a quick intro to IRC. It's a really useful tool. It's a really great way to get to know the other people in the community. And um, I definitely look forward to seeing you on IRC.